Hello, Senior Stoner fans. It's the real Senior Stoner back at you for your Puffco Peak Pro Diamond Dab of the Day with Mendo Breath. Mendo Breath today. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Today is Thursday. As always, if you enjoy today's topic, you know what to do. Send a subscription, join the family, hit that like button, and I respond to all comments. Let's get started with today's topic. It's going to help everybody. Because you know what? We've got to find ways to make decisions well and make them fast. Let's get started. Our lives often are defined by our ability to make decisions, careers, relationships, health, anything and everything about our present lives boils down to the decisions we've made in the past. Yet some of us struggle still with decision-making skills. We may have to access data. We may have to look at options and have everything going for us. But when crunch time rolls around, we seize up. People do this. People don't know how to make good decisions. They freeze. Well, we need to make a commitment. We need to make a commitment that we're not gonna be overthinkers. We're not gonna be procrastinators. We're not going to try to be perfectionists. If we've identified with the things I just labeled, we're at the extreme of the decision-making process, spending a lot too much time thinking about our decisions without time acting on them. For people like us, we need to balance out decision-making with a little bit of what's called rashness or by listening to our gut feeling. We need techniques that are gonna help us drive and dive into our decisions head first and stop worrying about the repercussions so much. Now, let's look at this and understand that maybe we can help balance out our decision-making skills. The two-minute rule. The idea behind this is to force action through a self-imposed deadline. It's simple enough to incorporate. Anytime you have to make a decision, just set a timer and begin the process. The time limit forces us to quickly assess the pros and cons while quickly coming to a decision. The simplicity behind this tip makes it very successful for most people. If you're simply slow at making decisions, then this tip might be a lifesaver you also don't have to limit yourself to two minutes every time. Anything from one to five minutes might work as well. If you find you have bigger, important decisions to make that will take more time, give yourself more time. But still apply a deadline. Whether it's 24 hours, a week, or a year, having a time limit will force you into action. Think black and white. There are more times when we have more choices than we need. You can think about them just like that. They're all around us. Well, excess of anything can overwhelm and lead to what's called analysis paralysis. We freeze. And in this case, use your decision-making skills to judge the options as simply good or bad, which will simplify and quicken the process of weeding out the less optimal decisions. The limited approach like this is ideal for overanalyzers who insist on questioning every variable. Sure, it's okay to dedicate some time to think so you can evaluate things better, but it becomes problematic when you start to overthink. If you're more visual, you can make columns. Put your choices on the good or the bad size. This limiting of your options will naturally start making decision easier in the decision tree as it narrows. Put it in a hat. It's one of the simplest decision-making skills. If all options seem to have roughly equal value, write down your best ones on a separate piece of paper, put them in a hat or a bag. Your decision will be the one you pull out at random. It's ideal for quick decision-making, and it also works if you have many tasks you don't want to do. These could pair with a reward, for example. 
So it's very interesting. We've got a lot of options. And what we can look at is maybe do a task. And then when it's done, pull out your random reward from the hat. And that'll make the process even more tolerable. Try not to use this for very big decisions, of course. If you're deciding where to buy your first home, etc., or what job to take. Focus on the present. We can often become overwhelmed when we think about the big picture, trying to see how our decisions will affect the future. The process of reaching a decision, however, becomes mentally draining because you're trying to see every step along every outcome and all the permutations and all the possibilities. Maybe it's better to save that energy for the task at hand and simply try to make the best decision possible. Live in the moment. Make a decision based about what the next step would be. Doing this for every step is a great choice for the chronic non-decision makers out there. This is one of the decision-making skills that involves visualization. So visualize the results of each possible decision and determine which one makes life easier and or better. You better embrace the idea of failure in life Probably the biggest fear for us to slow decision makers is that our decisions may lead to bad results. Well, we then compensate by overthinking every situation, causing us to question every aspect involved in the decision. Ultimately, we run the risk of making no decision at all because we're frozen and wasted time and energy on useless questioning. This line of thinking must be rewired. Maybe instead, we should be delaying a decision as worse than making a bad decision and work directly on quick decision-making skills. We can recover and learn something when making bad decisions, but not making a decision at all means we don't get to determine how our lives unfold. Fear of failure means that something or someone will make the decision for you. And probably you will regret it for the rest of your life. We've got to overcome that fear and make decisions faster. The bottom line, the bottom line is it's rarely the case that the best decision to make is not make one at all. Think of it. Those who struggle to make decisions through problem solving run the risk of letting their lives run them rather than them running their own lives. It puts independence under constant threat. So it's up to us to make sure that we take control of our lives and our decisions. That is correct. We must, every step of the way, we must. Remember, this is only five or six things to talk about. There are hundreds of ways and skills that you can master and look at to help you better make decisions quickly. I'm a very analytical person, in case you can't tell. So I've always looked at things upside, sideways, around the back. I've come at every angle I can possibly find on something before I make a final decision. And you know what? I think I'm really lucky that I can do that, okay? It slows me down a bit, but you know what? In the end, it protects me. Let's take our dad of the day, everybody. And I hope you all have a wonderful Thursday. It's a beautiful day here in New Jersey. I hope it's nice wherever you are. And all of you, if you enjoyed this video, please join the family. The family is growing by leaps and bounds. I truly enjoy doing this. Send a like and I will reply to your comments. This has been The Real Senior Stoner talking about how important it is to make decisions. Cheers, and have a great one. <coughs> Very tasty. <coughs> Very tasty. Take care, everybody.
and have a great day out there. Cheers.